All right, so we're in Doug's bus conversion, and we're uh, monitoring his eight valence 12-volt uh, pack batteries here. While we're doing a, a top balance on his solar, and this is uh, this is very tricky, critical stuff. But what we're doing here is we're noticing that the balancing is active. Point to it, Doug. So balance is active here, and that happens when the cell voltage spread goes above 40 millivolts. So when that goes above 40 millivolts and the computer is plugged in to the, uh, the batteries, RS-485, um, you know, controllers, BMS, you know, the internal BMS in the batteries, or internal controllers, the balancing will come on. Now, see, it just went off, that the balancing just went inactive. See that? It mm -hmm. turned green again. <laughs> so we're doing this on solar and just monitoring it, right? Um, these batteries need a, a bit of TLC to bring them back to peak performance. Now it is a little cloudy outside too, so that's having an effect on how much we're getting in here too. But we've managed to get it up to 14.3. Yeah, I mean, it's still early in the morning, relatively early. The sun is not that bright yet, but... Um, the MPPTs are showing 14.4. Let's get to cell 8. Let's check cell or, or module 8. So we're just cycling between the different batteries here, and we're looking for, mm, you know, the, <laughs> the peak, I guess, here. Um, 3.65 is what we're really looking for on the highest cell voltage and then at that point we gotta start shutting down gotta start stopping things now I mentioned um, some in a previous video some trials Ooh. and tribulations about this um, what are you ooing about you see something there well number four is down considerably compared to the rest this is 3.346 uh, as a rule and the other ones were 3.5 so some trials and tribulations we had on this usb adapter here in making this cable this is pretty well documented online how to do that but the problem was that the rs45 usb that we got um was based on a cp I want to say it was a CP210 chip or driver and the software would not read it. We'd done the wiring correctly. We were we were positive we had things right but just the software would not see it at all and you know the, the COM port was correct and all that jazz. And so what we determined was that the chip in the USB adapter was not essentially compatible or whatever with this valence software. So we returned that, or we're going to return that to uh, Amazon. We got another one that's based on an FTDI chip. Point at it, Doug. There, the USB. That guy. We got that, plugged it in, boom, worked immediately. So that that's important. And then the other thing is you have to find one that outputs 5 volts. Um, and so there's a bunch of them that don't output 5 volts to the BMS and the internal BMS. So... That one there, um, I can put a link to that in the in the video description. So now we're on module five, which is battery five, and the mill the cell spread got above forty millivolts, and it's going ahead and it's balancing, which is great. That's what we want to see. And the blue voltages are the ones that um, I guess it's uh, got the resistor turned on, right? So it's. I'm not sure about how the internal mechanics of it look, but those cell bank, you know, on the left there, those four voltages, those will change colors. The blue there, see now it just went act in, inactive because it was satisfied for whatever reason. Well, it could be, there's a possibility it could be transferring into another, into another battery too, right? Balancing it's all out. inside that one. It's all inside that one battery. It'd be nice to catch it doing it again if this um, 
the cell spring <coughs> comes up. So we got cell five balancing now. Or sorry, not cell, cell battery four. five. Yes, yeah, cell four is uh is kicked in. Yeah, we've got a couple of them above three point six here. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting that yeah, showing balance that on really four. Close. Yeah, six point one too. So that's a big that's a big number. All right, I want to do uh, quick tips on just talk a little bit about some of the difficulties we had with this Thunderstruck BMS for these uh, valence batteries. Uh, we got it working. When that light is purple there, that means that it's um, it's got the relay on and that it's happy. Um, challenges we had getting the computer to work. Um, a lot of these micro USB cables are um, charge only. They don't have all the wires to communicate over the USB, they're just designed to charge a phone. So we had to go through several several USB cables here before we found one that would actually communicate with the computer. Uh, second thing is, in the computer, we had to load the CP210 driver, um, which if you have the, the Thunderstruck manual, or you search around online, you'll, you'll find a link to the, load that driver on your computer. Uh, let me show that. So if you go into Device Manager on your computer, you'll see that it's come up here as uh, the CP210 USB to UART bridge on COM3. The COM3 is gonna vary depending on your computer and what it decides it is. It could vary each time you plug it in. But um, that's the driver that we had to have to make um, the USB talk to the computer. So that was another step we had to go through to get that driver loaded. Okay, and then here's a bit more of this PuTTY config. Um, you have to download PuTTY, which is a free serial communication program. And we had to tell it COM3 serial, 9600 baud, to make that communicate. And then once you're in here, you're using a command line, so it's you know it's going to show you your various cell voltages on your batteries, which we had to go through and reassign these numbers one at a time using the command line and the pack, each battery individually. Um, and there is help in here, right? But everything you're going to do is at the command line, and it's very unforgiving. So if you mistype, you're gonna have to start over. Um, don't pay attention to those voltages there. Those are ones that we're doing because we're trying to really bring the pack up. And, you know, we need to get these up a little bit higher for those to be happy. Right, let's talk about this this relay so this relay is a Chinese piece of junk and it was only about 40 or 50 bucks and we hate it already because it gets hot just running there so spend the money and get a good relay um, but the Thunderstruck <clears throat> the uh, we're only doing the um, the high side disconnect right now so what, what we're wanting to do here is um, disconnect the pack, disconnect the charge when the charge voltage is high, right? When that gets up to the, the point where a cell has reached, you know, predetermined voltage, um, we want the solar to be disconnected. So we've got the, the, the Thunderstruck completes a path to ground does not supply the 12 volts to the relay for the relay to function. You have to supply the 12 volts to the, the relay and then it completes a path to ground. When you first plug it in, it doesn't turn that relay on until you plug the computer in 
and verify the configuration, then it will turn the relay on. It doesn't do anything prior to that. Um, once it does, you know, once it's had power, um, it will go ahead and continue to function without the computer attached from that point forward. But if it loses power, you have to plug the computer back into it to make it happy. Um, if you were to disconnect the connection to the valence batteries, um, it's going to drop this relay. So we had to put in a bypass switch that completes the path to ground again, right, to uh, cause the relay to be on. So we've got 12 volts going through a fuse into the, into the relay, and then we're switching the ground side. Uh, just like that does so we can manually uh, bypass this relay and cause it to be on um, you know when when the when the BMS is uh, is not uh, operating